everyone, welcome to my talk today, how to deal with conflict and incivility at work as a nurse. I've been contacted by student nurses and registered nurses um, for some strategies of how to deal with workplace incivility. And it's a subject that's really close to my heart. As a student nurse many years ago in the 1980s, I nearly left nursing because I was bullied by a mentor. And I see sometimes on nursing forums, students or registered nurses having to deal with incivility at work. And I thought this session hopefully might help one person out there at least. And I'll be sharing some of my experiences, what I found helpful. Everybody's situation will be different, but I hope it can help somebody out there. And if you've got any questions at all, do put them into the YouTube comments. So I hope it helps. As part of this talk, I'm going to initially look at the impact and cost of conflict and incivility with some references. If there's any students out there, you might want to look at this topic. It's very interesting in one of your assignments, for example. Um, I'll also give a brief overview of three personal experiences dealing with bullying, conflict and incivility and link those experiences to some of the strategies I use to deal with workplace incivility. Um, I'll also cover how to escalate and access support. So looking at the difference between incivility and bullying, the main difference with bullying is that you're being targeted targeted by a bully. There's an intention there to focus on that one person versus incivility where the behaviour could have been any staff member that's made to feel uncomfortable in that situation. So, for example, somebody going into an office and shouting at one person due to preparation, a trolley not being prepared properly. That could have been any staff member in the firing line at that time, as opposed to somebody intending on targeting and bullying one person. Um, although incivility and uh, uncivil behaviours may relate to bullying and harassment, so that bully may use uncivil behaviours. And it's helpful to look at employers' bullying and harassment policy. All employers will have a bullying and harassment policy during your preceptorship because you may observe um, uncivil behaviour or bullying and it's helpful to know that policy. The NHS also has a toolkit supporting our staff, a toolkit to promote cultures of civility and respect. And within those documents, they will highlight and try to increase awareness of, of uncivil behaviours and bullying and harassing behaviours. So I thought sharing three personal experiences very briefly, um, and then I'll reflect on them and what I learned from these experiences sort of a bit later as well when we look at strategies. But the first experience, I was a student and I was bullied by my mentor. It was in the 1980s and it was my first placement. We worked in a very hierarchical system and we didn't use reflection and we were just taught to deliver and not to question. And I had a mentor who um, shouted at me nearly every shift I was on told me I was useless, that I'd never make a good nurse. And when somebody sees you like that, I remember it really knocked my confidence. And I felt very nervous when I, she came into the vicinity. And I remember drawing up some IVs or some uh, medications. And I was literally shaking and I dropped everything all over the table and she started bellowing at me. Um, and I'd go home crying every night. And looking back now, 34 years later, um, I very nearly left nursing, so I would have lost those 34 years of my career. And it was only through the support of my family and other students that I stayed. There was no escalation then, there was no HR to go to. Um, but I did, something clicked in me and I thought, no, you're not going to stop me. And I carried on. And the next placement, the mentor could not have been um, kinder to me. And ironically, then I went on to my, in my career to become an educator and to support others which I wouldn't have done if I'd left nursing. The second experience um, was verbal incivility that I observed between two staff members, and it was early in my career. They didn't get on. Everybody knew they didn't get on, and it affected team working. And one of the staff members was quite senior, so nobody wanted to address it. Nobody wanted to work when they were on together. And I remember people changing their rotors. Did I report it? No. It was in the early 1990s and again we didn't have those escalation policies and well, well, that I knew about and 
I was very junior. What I did, I just left. Um, and I didn't want to stay in the team. Um, the ward, I know that, that somebody senior was friends with one of the people that didn't get on. And I thought this is just not going to change. Um, and my reaction actually is one, when you look at the literature, it's quite common reaction for um, nurses early in their career. Um, junior staff are greatly affected by incivility at work if it's not addressed. Um, we know one of the biggest ways to retain staff is to have a positive team and to feel supported. The third experience I experienced um, was I experienced incivility and somebody actually shouting at me in front of other staff and it was later in my career. I'd grown in confidence, I'd been on conflict resolution courses, I'd educated myself, paid to do the degree and I called it out. I set my boundaries and um, I'll talk, talk this through a little bit later with some of the strategies but um, that I'm not uh, accepting somebody talking to me like that in front of staff um, and we went to a quiet room and, and sort of talked it through and the person was burnt out that shouted at me and said it wasn't aimed at me in particular um, and which we will look at a little bit later when we look at the research. So you can see from my personal experiences that I shared, um, two of them I ignored the situation and that is a common reaction. So ignoring incivility or failing to acknowledge it or just pretending it didn't happen. However, the, there's the potential for that behavior to continue and you may become resentful or leave to avoid the person. So the second example I gave, the first example is a student I was leaving. What would I have done if I, if that was my actual place of work where I couldn't have gone on to the second placement and then the second example I gave where I did leave, I just left as, as an early career nurse. I thought I don't want to work in this toxic environment. So why do staff fail to acknowledge or ignore? Staff often are afraid of the fallout or of being targeted, especially if experienced nurses are involved. You might not work with that person enough for them to bother you. Um, so it's somebody visiting, I don't know, GP practice once a month and you might think, well, I'm not going to see it, but, you know, I'm highly unlikely I'm going to see them again. So it doesn't get addressed. It might be too much work on top of everything else. Or you may just be a person that hates conflict in any aspect of your life. But current workplace environments are pressurised and staff burnout is increasing the chance of conflict. So I think as a profession, it's something we need to take very seriously. We need to educate um, junior staff and um, students on how to manage challenging situations. We need to call it out. Um, have clear escalation policies where people can speak up and, um, and and being able to manage those situation, I think, and develop those skills is very important. When we look at the evidence base on the impact of conflict and incivility at work, it's clear effective teamwork improves job satisfaction and patient care outcomes and decreases nurse turnover and improves nurse retention. And if incivility is not addressed, you lose staff and it impact, impacts staff health. So if they're not going, I'm going to go. And I did a talk on my YouTube channel, Teamwork in Nursing, with lots of references surrounding effective teamwork work if any of you are doing assignments in that area. I also recommend two TED Talks, they're relatively short, that describe the impact of incivility on teams and individuals. And I mentioned this in my um, YouTube talk, Teamwork in Nursing, last year. Christine Porath is an internationally renowned professor and author of the book she wrote was Mastering Civility, a Manifesto for the Workplace. And her talk, Do Nice People Finish Last or Best, is well worth a listen. She conducted a poll of 800 workers and 80% um, said they lost time at work worrying about an instant of workplace hostility. 63% lost time trying to avoid this person. And I remember doing that as a student. I would hide in the sleuth when I knew the mentor that was awful to me when my first placement was on. And so I really relate to this um, and job satisfaction reduces and reduced productivity because your confidence will go down. Um, so it, it really, imp incivility will affect retention and service delivery. 
Another TED Talk um, that I highly recommend is Chris Turner. He's a UK consultant in emergency care and his TED Talk on when rudeness in teams turn deadly describes the shocking impact of rudeness um, and he argues that civility saves lives and um, talks through the potential fatal consequences and he links to this case study of a four-year-old admitted to emergency department at 2 a.m. with shortness of breath and there being this heated discussion and how rudeness impacted on the whole um, scenario. Um, as I said, um, I have some research papers and references linked to these TED Talks and the speakers and they're in the YouTube talk Teamwork in Nursing. Um, that I released last year. So do check that out if you're interested in some of the references underpinning those talks. Cook and Baumbusch 2021 paper, um, not just how many, but who is on shift, the impact of workplace incivility and bullying on care delivery in nursing homes is a really interesting paper exploring the impact of incivility. It's not just about how many staff you work with, but who you work with and how they communicate. It's an ethnographic research study and it included observations and interviews with staff. And they found that power relations led some staff to refuse assistance from some co-workers. So incivility affected team dynamics and who people would go to for support. So similarly with my um, experiences, the second reflection that I talked through where there was two team members that didn't get on, I mentioned that people changed their rotors or would avoid those um, working with those two people when they were on together. So um, if staff are avoiding working with certain people due to incivility and uncivil behaviours, that has massive implications for patient care. If staff are intentionally avoiding working with people, um, and and as I said, I, I did this when I would go into the sluice when my um, mentor was on, for example. Interestingly, if any of you are interested in this area, um, there's another thought and perspective to think about as a profession. Is conflict a normal process in healthcare? Is it inevitable? We work in highly pressurised environments. We have high vacancy rates. Should we be preparing students, newly registered nurses, for inevitable conflict at some stage? If you think about when in families, we work closely, to, you live closely together, inevitably you are going to have some conflicts and disputes. And is it a normal process? And there is some researchers and some authors that think it is, that we should be man learn to manage these situations because it's inevitable. There's also a level of zero tolerance. So, you know, if somebody's going to throw a cup at you, for example, you know, that we say this is the zero tolerance, this is not acceptable. And um, but it's thinking about potentially where are these behaviours coming from? And, you know, we have to learn to set our boundaries and manage potential rudeness um, and uncivil behaviours in the workplace. We could do that through role play simulations, for example, if there is this inevitability that it's, you're going to come across it in your career. And there's two interesting references, one from Mary Parker Follett from Cloak and Goldsmith. This is quoted in the book Cloak and Goldsmith, Goldsmith wrote, the art of waking people up, cultivating awareness and authenticity at work. And Mary Parker Follett is quoted as stating, it is possible to conceive conflict as not necessarily a wasteful outbreak of incompatibilities, but a normal process by which socially valuable differences register themselves for the enrichment of all concerned. And then Jane Gunn, um, she's written a, a good little book called The Authority of Guide to Conflict Resolution. It's very, um, I think it's under £10 in Amazon. I'll put the link actually in my description. And there's some interesting exercises in there. Um, Jane Gunn stated, your ability to deal with the challenges and crises in the relationships with your colleagues, friends and family come down to how effectively you can manage conflict. And there's some um, interesting um, strategies in her book. So following my experiences, I put together some tips and strategies that you might be able to use 
um, to deal with conflict and incivility. But remember, every case is different and always reach out for support and advice if you're struggling. So there's five things, really. You can either self-manage at the time, try and contextualise what's happening. Is this bullying? Is this person consist consistently targeting me? And then you can look at the um, bullying and harassment policy potentially of how to deal with this situation. And usually it's about setting your boundaries with that person, but contextualising. Is it an uncivil behaviour um, and talking to other staff? Reflecting and documenting what happens, very important. Escalating, you may escalate to a manager, an educator, a colleague, personal tutor, human resources, or freedom to speak up guardian and union representative even for support. Addressing the issue, you might need mediation if you can't resolve the issue. And ideally, you're aiming to resolve the issue and set future boundaries. So a few so some tips to help you if you're looking at um, managing the situation yourself. Try and move to a quiet, confidential room if possible to discuss issues so you don't upset other staff and patients. And at the time, that not, might not be feasible. You might have to do it the next day or the next week, even if your shifts don't link. Active listening. Aim, even though someone's behaviour may be unacceptable um, and it really has, upsets you, Try and aim to see the other person's perspectives when you do meet and letting the person speak first, maybe so they can get off the chest how they feel. Or it might be that you've planned to say what you feel, but in whichever way, whichever order you're speaking, try and see the other person's perspective and look at the whole situation, because um, sometimes it helps to put it in context that the person actually didn't mean to upset you. And it was a culmination of external factors, poor communication or differing goals, for example. You also don't have to answer. If you feel uncomfortable, you can leave the room. You can say that um, you need time to reflect on this, setting your boundaries and seeking professional advice to mediate and resolve issues if you can't achieve resolution or the other person continues to be aggressive or unprofessional. And if you're looking at managing a situation and you're junior, you might want someone in there to mediate from the beginning. You might not feel confident um, and you might want to talk to human resources or, or um, um, freedom to speak up guardian, for example. When you're discussing the issue with the person, you achieve more by being civil, not shouting, even if they're shouting at you, not losing your temper, even if they do. Um, take time out, set your boundaries. You, if if um, you feel the situation is getting stressful and that they're starting to lose their temper again, you can say, I'll oh, come back when you're calmer. I'm not prepared to talk to you when you're shouting at me. I'm not happy with the way you're speaking to me. Can we talk this through in a quiet room? And it might be at the time you can use these sort of sentences just to um, start you to address the issue. Learning how to assert yourself professionally is a skill. Um, remember, you deserve better and you're in the right trying to address the issue. And we all have to work with people that we don't necessarily, we wouldn't socialise with. We might not like their personality, but you should be able to form a professional relationship and be able to work together profession, in a professional capacity. Um, I've got some example sentences. I mean, for me, when I... Um, one of the I remember one issue that I tried to address. I had to think about it beforehand. Now, some people wouldn't want to plan what they're going to say, but sometimes I think it's helpful for me personally. Um, and some starting sentences might be, how do you feel about what happened yesterday between us? So you're not going in straight away with a negative um, and or the reason I wanted to meet you was to discuss what happened yesterday. I think it would be helpful to discuss. So we're sort of using some positive language there rather than what you said to me yesterday really upset me. And um, I mean, you can say that later, but just starting the conversation about um, that you want to have this discussion to come to a resolution using certain sentences to lead in. It, it, it sets the tone, I suppose. Um, after what happened last week, we need to agree a way forward so we can work professionally together in the future. Or I would like to discuss whatever the issue was. Otherwise, I'll have to consider asking HR to find a mediator as it's affecting team working. And 
because if they're not happy to come and talk to you and resolve it, you're trying to do that. It needs to still get resolved. And sometimes people don't want to resolve an issue. They don't feel there's an issue. They don't want to discuss it. But that's not acceptable because you should have a and a working environment that's conducive to positive team working and it won't be if it's left um, as i said don't start with the negative try and keep it neutral i found this has worked for me in the past um, as i said i wonder if we could talk through what happened the other day there's something i need to discuss with you and stating clearly and concisely what behavior upset you so that's why if you reflect and document yourself before you meet somebody and plan it a little bit that's helpful. Also, if you're having somebody in experience mediating, it's helpful to have that reflection. And sometimes that can make it more clear, make the issue more clearer for you and more focused. And then setting boundaries, because boundaries need to be set moving forward. Um, moving forward, can we agree that you won't send another email like that or that, you know, whatever the, the issue is, that you have this agreement that you're going to move forward together in the future, I will let you know this, so you will let me know that you have this sort of negotiation, maybe, and this agreement to resolve an issue. Um, it might be that you just say, I will not tolerate this behaviour again, That um, and what you're going to do if it happens again, because you have to set your boundaries. It depends very much on the individual issue. Documenting, reflecting and escalating was, has been very helpful for me in certain situations. And if you feel uncomfortable about the way team members are behaving, you might observe it. Speak to a trusted, experienced staff member. Visit your HR department. Freedom to Speak Up Guardian for confidential advice and support or your union representative. Um, mediation can be sought between team members and it, that aims to promote positive team working and resolve team issues and sometimes you need a professional mediator having a reflective account is very helpful to help you it's helped me process my thoughts and feelings to see the whole picture but also reflection can be brought into a mediation so that you can give your view and it helps you um, get your view across and having it written down is helpful if you've observed incivility and you want to report an issue to a senior person, um, stick to the facts on what you observe, not what you think happened or gossip that you've heard. And you may sometimes be asked to write a formal statement, which would be written similar to an incident report as part of a formal investigation. An area that can lead to incivility and potentially bullying and harassment as well is gossip. Miscommunication can escalate when um, staff members are gossiping and mis mistruths get spread and information is shared second hand or third hand. So don't gossip about other people, even if you hear others gossiping. It causes undue stress for the individuals. It's just not fair being gossiped about and it prevents positive team working. How would you like a whole water staff talking about you or a whole community team talking about you? It's unprofessional, it's unkind and it's got no place in nursing. So some final thoughts for the future. We have increased awareness, for example, civility saving lives campaigns and education. I would like to see more simulations role play on pre-registration courses and preceptorship programmes on how to manage incivility and challenges in the workplace. Employers have clear processes for reporting issues and accessing support and staff need to report incivility. And if they're not reporting it, we need to question why and, and explore why, why that's not happening. So what I've learned after 34 years nursing, treat the cleaner and support workers with as much respect as your chief nurse. Everybody deserves respect in the workplace. My mother's a cleaner and was a cleaner for many years and every conversation you have make it count listen to others welcome students new starters at the start of the shift acknowledging skills and needs of students and staff helps recruit and retain them don't spread gossip call it out if you observe others experiencing incivility and be the change in the future these are the references from my talk today if you're doing assignments in this area 
Um, if you have any comments or questions, do put them in the YouTube comments. And if you prefer to contact me on a less public forum, you can DM me on my Twitter or my website as well. If you're interested in either of my books, um, how to prepare for interviews and develop your career or how to thrive as a newly qualified nurse, I have links to my books in my YouTube description as well. So I hope you found the talk helpful.